In chapter 5 of the story of the stone, Cao Sui Qin writes a descriptive passage describing the objects in Qin Shi's bedroom. The series of objects the author describes sets the scene for Bao Yu's ensuing dream about the land of illusion, in which the fairy disenchantment tries to teach him a lesson about the illusory nature of passion and lust. Each of the objects Cao Sui Qin describes allude to stories that could be read to warn of the dangers of indulgence in pleasure and lust, which relate to the broader themes in the novel about cycles of success and failure, and the necessity of letting go of the desire for physical or mental pleasures. These ideas are most explicitly introduced in Bao Yu's dream, which immediately follows Cao Sui Qin's description of these items. I will take up three of these items in detail. The passage goes like this. In the course of this exchange, the party had made its way to Qin Shi's bedroom. As Bao Yu entered, a subtle whiff of the most delicious perfume assailed his nostrils, making a sweet stickiness inside his drooping eyelids and causing all the joints in his body to dissolve. What a lovely smell, he repeated the words several times over. Inside the room, there was a painting by Tang Yin entitled Spring Slumber depicting a beautiful woman asleep under a crab apple tree whose buds had not yet opened. The painting was flanked on either side by a pair of calligraphic scrolls inscribed the couplet from the brush of the song poet Qin Guan. As Bao Yu enters the room, he sees a painting and a couplet paired together. These objects are symbolically relevant in several ways. The painting, Tang Yin's Spring Slumber, depicts a beautiful woman asleep beneath a crab apple tree's unopened buds. Tang Yin was known for his paintings of beautiful women. The image you see now is an example of one of these paintings. The couplet reads, The coldness of spring has imprisoned the soft buds in a wintry dream. The fragrance of wine has intoxicated the beholder with imagined flower scents. This couplet thus reflects the idea that pleasure is an illusion, and pursuing it can be dangerous, which turns out to be the main lesson that Bao Yu is entreated to learn in his ensuing dream. In this way, the painting and its illusions foreshadow his dream. In the next part of the passage, Cao describes the contents in Qin Shi's room, which provide a similar lesson through the illusions that Cao makes. On a table stood an antique mirror that had once graced the tiring room of the lascivious empress Wu Zetian. Beside it stood the golden platter on which Flying Swallow once danced for her emperor's delight. And on the platter was the very quince which the villainous An Lushan threw at the beautiful Yang Gui Fei, bruising her plump white breast. At the far end of the room stood the priceless bed on which Princess Shou Yang was sleeping out of doors under the eaves of the Hanjiang Palace when the plum flower lighted on her forehead and set a new fashion for colored patches. Over it hung a canopy commissioned by Princess Tong Chang, entirely fashioned out of ropes and pearls. The antique mirror on Qin Shi's table was a possession of the lascivious empress Wu Zetian, whose picture you see now, who stabilized and consolidated the Tang dynasty. She is popularly described as beautiful, yet cruel, ruthless, and wanton. She is also rumored to have killed many men, including her husband and his first wife. The golden platter that Flying Swallow danced on alludes to a similar story. Flying Swallow, or Zhao Feiyan, was a consort of Emperor Cheng. She was considered to be the great downfall of Emperor Chong. Some stories say she killed all of his male heirs because she could not bear one. Other stories say she was wrongfully blamed for his own bad decisions. But both versions considered the Emperor's enchantment with her to be the reason for his downfall. This idea, that the greatest mistake a person can make is to give in to desire, love, and lust, is an idea that repeats in constant refrain throughout this passage, Bao Yu's dream, and later parts of the novel. For example, in Bao Yu's dream, which follows a description of this room, Bao Yu has his first sexual experience in the Land of Illusion. Directly afterward, Bao Yu is violently pulled into the Fort of Error and out of his dream. In this way, Tao's inclusion of these items in his description of Qin Shi's room adds another layer to the many ways that he expresses this lesson throughout the following pages of the novel. Thus, Tao is not only setting the scene for Bao Yu's dream, but for the rest of the novel as well. This is not the only occasion in which we see Cao Sui Qin using this technique of including detailed descriptions of objects that set not only the physical scene, but the thematic scene as well. Throughout the novel, object descriptions and other details in the writing allude to historical references that relate to repeating motifs in the book. In this case, 
the object descriptions alluded to the stories about men falling from grace after an indulgence in pleasure, led to their downfall by beautiful women. This theme is seen in the scenes immediately following the object descriptions, but also in later scenes involving the same characters of the same room. These allusions make clear the layer of meaning that's how weaves throughout his text.